like that. And I apologize, because we are delayed by like 10 minutes here. So, all right. Well, that's good for you guys here in the stream, because we do get to see the entirety of the 450 main event. Let me do one thing really quickly here, because I don't have my full-size keyboard. But I've always got a bag of trips up my sleeve. We're going to just go on board with Dad Shoes for a moment while I get this sorted. There we go. Coming in clutch. The gate is down. It's going to be Rubes on the inside who gets a good drive and the hole shot with McChicken close by in second. Is Dorian going to take the outside with him? He is. So we're going to see Rubes in first. Dorian in second, McChicken in third, Minnie in fourth, and it's Dad Shoes who is sitting in fifth. So just as a reminder to everybody, Rubes here on the MXB Mods KTM is our current series leader and red plate holder, and it's Dad Shoes who is in second in the point series as they get together, bump each other, and go down. Jones also pays the price for that. So out front here, we have Dorian in first, McChicken in second as McChicken is trying to make a quick and easy pass. But Dorian is not going to let the ladder be true. He's going to be hard to pass. McChicken's still going to try. Both of them opt to, uh, no, Dorian takes the middle line. McChicken to the outside. McChicken gets a good drive up here. Over the bridge they go, bar to bar as we come into this section. Both of them opting to take the same line. Can McChicken keep it up and clean? And no, he doesn't. So Dorian takes the lead. Clean and clear. It's Fafalito with the DT crew who moves up into second. Mini with the rogue team in third. Chicken finds his way back into fourth. We've got Stone Rider in fifth. Troy, Dad Shoes, Rubes, Aiden, Reese, David, Beast. And it is a pain train beyond that, boys. So here we go as we finish out our opening lap after the start straight and start lap number one officially. Timing and scoring will update once again as we come across the finish line. Dorian holding first. Fafalito in second. Mini still in third. McChicken still in fourth. So not much has changed there. But Dorian goes down just after the rollers here, before the first rhythm section. So Fafalito is bar to bar as he has now taken the lead. But how long can he make it stick? Dorian is on a tear trying to blitz these whoops and catch up. Mini pushes up. We now have a three-way battle for the lead here in the 450 main event. Fafalito takes an interesting line there, ends up trying to tire tap the wall and pays the price. Dorian moves back into first, Mini in second. Stone Rider has pushed from a fifth place spot up into third. It is Dad Shoes who now finds himself in fifth and McChicken bar to bar with his teammate Troy on the McMonster Kawasaki's. So Dorian trying to really hold down his lead spot here and make sure that he does not lose it. Um, anybody who is able to take it away from him uh, or anybody who, who he is trying to chase down for points, I should say, is stuck pretty far back. But he makes a mistake. It's Mini on the Rogue Honda who takes the lead. And he is being hunted by Stone Rider who makes the pass in the air across the Supercross Triple. Almost goes down, but he manages to keep it up. So we have seen bar-to-bar -bar action here between Mini and Stone Rider as we have officially completed lap number one. Timing and scoring is going to begin updating in the top left hand of the corner. You can also check out Resolute's Kraken's stream on Twitch for live timing and scoring for more information, lap times, penalties, best laps, things like that. So give that a shot uh, if you have a second monitor. Uh, or just want to pull it up in another tab. But Stone Rider here on the aerial KTM has now moved into the first place spot. It is Mini who sits in third. Fafalito, or sits in second, sorry. Fafalito in third. Dorian fell back to fourth. But Dad Shoes sitting in fifth. So if Dad Shoes is going to reclaim the red plate tonight, then what he needs to do is make sure that he finishes far enough in Rubes, or I'm sorry, uh, far enough ahead of Rubes to reclaim that title. Uh, if somebody in the chat happens to know what the point spread is between Rubes, Dad Shoes, and Dorian, I want to say Dorian is sitting in third, uh, but I'm not sure. And I feel like Dad Shoes and Rubes are just maybe single, like one or two points spread from each other. So if Dad Shoes can finish ahead of Rubes by at least one spot, maybe two spots, then we could see him carrying the red plate once again as we come into round 10 next week. But for right now, that's not what Dad, what's on Dad Shoes' mind. All he's worried about is getting around Dorian and making a pass, making it stick, and moving up to the front of the pack. If we take a look at lap times here early in the moto, you'll see that your race leader, Stone Rider, with the fastest of a 110, Mini a 111, Dorian a 112, Dad Shoes also with a 112. So Stone Rider has got the track dialed. He's ready to go as Mini now makes a mistake. Dad Shoes is going to get by, but Dad Shoes makes a mistake. So what does that mean for us? It means Fafalito has now moved into the third place spot and is trying to hunt down Dorian. So 
So, who is behind Fafalito now? It is Rubes, as Rubes has found his way around Dad Shoes, and the red plate holder is currently sitting in fourth. Can he hold this spot down? Will we see a battle between Dad Shoes and Reese? I think the answer is yes to that question, and when, when it will be is soon. Dad Shoes splitting the lanes here up the middle between Troy and Minnie. All riders almost stay up, but Minnie goes down, ends up taking Reese out with him. Dad Shoes goes down in the next triple section, and Troy not able to get it cleanly. So this is all good news for Rubes as he has now taken quite a gap on these guys and comes across the finish line in fourth. So Rubes is trying to click off the gears, hunt down the positions, and only further increase his points here in the series. We are halfway done with this series, guys, but there is still a lot of racing left, so every round counts. Beyond that, every lap counts, every position counts, and Rubes is trying to do his counting right here. Look at the gap already split between himself and Troy. The only man who poses a threat to his points lead, Dad Shoes, I believe, is sitting in seventh. So, already Rubes has got his sights set on on uh, second and third here. You can see Stone Rider going over the bridge there just out of the corner of the screen. Rubes takes the outside line, rails it, tries to get a good drive here off in the distance. You can see Dad Shoes leading a battle between Minnie and Reese. So what is going to happen here in our battle for second between Dorian and Fafalito? Fafalito having a hard time getting through that section there, so that's going to allow Rubes to catch up. You can see him now hunting him down. He's got his targeting systems on lock. Fafalito in his sights. Let's go on board here with Rubes as he is trying to catch up and push his way into second. I imagine that if he has got the th throttle turned on and giving it everything it's got, that he's going to be able to catch up to Fafalito. But if Fafalito turns the heat on, they could close the gap on Dorian, and we could see a three-way battle for second within this very lap. Thank you, LeFou. Rubes is two points ahead of Dad Shoes. Reese is the one who's in third, and Dorian is ten points down. So on with your race leader, Stone Rider, here as he is still checked out. As you can see, Stone Rider is already entering the 180 there. Far in front, he has already taken it. So Stone Rider trying to put himself in the number one spot tonight. Stone Rider has not had a race win yet in the nine rounds of the Aerial ESX series, but it's possible that he could do it here at Daytona. Rubes has now gotten around Fafalito. I missed it and I apologize, but Rubes now moves up into the third place spot. So where is Dad Shoes? Dad Shoes is down bad here trying to catch up to Reese, but Reese makes a mistake in the corner there. Almost takes out Dad Shoes with him, but doesn't. So Dad Shoes is trying to hunt down. Uh, no, that's not Beast. It's not even Troy. Let's head back out here to our orbit cam or free roam for just a moment. It's McChicken. I forget that McChicken is with us here in the 450 class. So, Dad Shoes trying to hunt down McChicken here. Move into seventh. Beyond that, he's still got 12 minutes plus one lap to make something happen. Perhaps the two McMonster Kawasaki teammates can hard charge through this pack and make their way up front. But that is no easy task. Daytona is a fast track. It is wide open as Dorian goes down and makes a mistake. Rubes gets caught up with him, and FA now moves from fourth back up to third. So we now have a three-way battle between Dorian, Fafalito, and Rubes for the second-place position. Can Rubes get the good drive in? Yes, he does. All riders hitting their lines. Triple, triple. Fafalito runs into the back of Dorian and goes down. Rubes narrowly avoids a crash there. Can he still clear the Supercross triple? Yes, so Rube still sitting in third. Aside from that drama which just happened, not much has changed uh, in the overall positioning, but Rubes is now closer to Dorian. He can smell the VP fuel coming out of the exhaust, and he is ready to move up into a higher uh, podium position. There you have your race leader there, Stone Rider, so you can see the gap that he has already put down on these guys. 12 seconds as of the end of last lap. So Stone Rider is going to start getting into heavier lap traffic, which could potentially hold him up and give Dorian and Rubes the time that they need to catch up and make a push for first. But like I said, it's not going to be easy. Daytona is a long-winded track, a lot of wide-open sections. It's very fast. Lap times are going to start to be ran similarly, and it's going to be hard for people to make up ground. 
as Rubes takes the inside line and tries to get bar to bar with Dorian, but that outside line and the drive that you get through that sand is just so important. Both riders triple triple through this section cleanly. Another section of triples coming up. Can Rubes make up any time here? It looks like he's going to be able to. Rubes trying to make a pass as he is almost bar to bar with Dorian. It is ever so close. Rubes is trying to set himself up for the inside pass. And is he going to get it? Yes, Rubes takes the inside line away from Dorian. However, he's not able to get the outside in the triple. Moves into Dorian's line and tries to slow him up, and it works. Rubes' racecraft and his technique is paying off, but Dorian's speed and his ability to keep it up is working for him as well as he now moves back into the second place. It's really impressive to watch these guys not only ride this track with such technical skill, but also recognize just their, their race craft, what Rubes is trying to do to Dorian to race him cleanly, but also be the more dominant of, of the two riders here and make a pass and make it stick. But Dorian is just not having it. I don't believe we've seen Dorian on the top spot uh, of, any, of any race this series either. I could be wrong. But he has always been a front runner. Rubes keeps taking that inside line, keeps making the pass on him, but Dorian comes right back, shoots out like a rocket from that sand section, and maintains his second place spot. So here we go again. This time Rubes going to jump on the inside and try to take it away. I don't think he's going to be able to triple. He's not. But his doubles should make him keep up with Dorian, as Dorian's also in the same position. So Rubes has now made the pass. Can he make it stick? My goodness, the battle between these two guys is intense. This has been some of the best racing that we have seen all season long. Same thing again. Rubes, you see, he's going to take that inside line, but he tries to take Dorian's line away and force Dorian to double, but Dorian's not having it. He manages to edge by and still hits that triple. Both of these riders tripling onto table, but not able to cleanly get off. Sending it over the roller. There are 18 other riders in this race right now who are having battles of their own, but it is the Dorian and Rubes show tonight here as these guys are in a heated back-and-forth battle for second place. You can see now Rubes opts to take the outside. Dorian goes inside. It just shows that the optional line choice here at Daytona, one is not necessarily clearly faster than the other. It gives riders the option to have their own room on the track but still maintain a battle. So earlier we saw Rubes making up time on Dorian here. It doesn't look like he's going to do it this time. He cases the second triple, not able to get it cleanly, and loses a couple of uh, bike links on Dorian. We are already seven and a half minutes remaining here in the moto, or in the main event, rather, plus one. So the gap that Stone Rider has on these two is only growing but not by much. He's only gained one second. You can see him here as he has just now had some trouble in the whoops and gone down. Perhaps this will allow Dorian and Rubes to catch up just a little bit, but only by a small margin. Let's get a wide shot here at what's happening elsewhere on the track, just so you can see. Riders everywhere scattered out. There is your race leader, Stone Rider, as he is entering the sand section. Looks like we have a battle between Jin and David going on. All these other riders, I mean, anything can happen. Somebody can go down and lead to a battle, but none yet are quite as close as what is happening here uh, between Rubes and Dorian. So here we are. Dorian still maintains his second place positioning. 6.45 left on the clock, plus one. Back again. Here we are. Rubes, is he going to get the better drive through the triple-triple section? Almost as he is nearing bar to bar action with Dorian. Oh, and Rubes slides the rear tire out on the downside, takes him and Dorian out. Both riders on the throttle trying to clear the finish line. Power of the 450 will get them there. Rubes moves up into second spot. Dorian takes the outside, triples in. What intense racing. I am just completely mesmerized and locked on to this battle right here because it really does not get any better than this. Jones goes down as a lapper, moves out of the way for Rubes and Dorian. The gap that we talked about earlier from Stone Rider was at 12, then 13. Now has moved down to 10 seconds, 5.55 left on the clock, just under six minutes. Let's take a look at some lap times here. Uh, let's go on board with Rubes while we do it. So Rubes, best lap, a 1.09. The crash that these guys had uh, caused him to run a 114. 
Dorian's best lap, a 110. Stone Rider's also a 110. So Rube has, Rubes has proven that he has the speed to make it past Dorian and then some. But it's not all about lap times. Dorian is, is, is riding his bike wide, working on making sure that Rubes doesn't always have the, f the flexibility and the freedom on the track to make that pass, but Rubes is trying to force his way in now. So once again, will Rubes take the inside line away from Dorian? He does, but he is, okay, he's not favoring that inside line anymore. Both riders opting to triple. I think Rubes is starting to learn from his mistakes here and what is holding him back from being able to check out on Dorian, but it is still as close as ever. Dorian definitely gets the better drive off of that step off. Blitzes through the whoops. Both these riders displaying incredible skill. And remember, guys, these guys have only had this track for a matter of hours. It's not like they've had a lot of time to practice on it. So where is Stone Rider? Stone Rider still down the straight line lane. Uh, it's still quite a ways off, but... We'll see. All right. So Rube still maintaining the second place spot. Can Dorian get the good drive through the triple? And he does. He's going to make the pass back on Rubes. It's this section that we have seen so much back and forth between these guys. I have a feeling it's going to be this section which comes down to a final, uh, a, a final lap push uh, for a higher podium position. Rubes tries to cut off the inside line away from Dorian and take it away. Dorian recognizes it, checks up a little bit, does not get tangled in with Rubes, is not able to clear the triple. He cases it, but Rubes has to double. These guys are fighting with each other. I know this is just racing, but this is a fight. This is boxing. This is, oh my God, Dorian goes down, gets caught into the back wheel of Rubes, and Rubes is the one who manages to make it away unscathed there. So Dorian now loses all of that progress. 17 minutes, 16 minutes, I'm sorry, of racing action between those guys almost, and it finally separates with Dorian coming together with Rubes and going down. Like I said, man, that was, that was, that was a boxing match as much as it was a motocross race, a supercross race. My God, your race leader here should be Stone Rider. Yep, as he is still checked out. Already made his way around Gerb and Steez, two riders who don't often see themselves getting lapped. So we will see what the gap is here as soon as Dorian comes around, or Rubes, I'm sorry. Dorian actually making up a lot of ground here. You can see that Rubes is 12 seconds down, but Dorian is only four seconds back on Rubes. So... Dorian might be really pushing it. I don't think Stone Rider would let off and try to ride his way to an easy race, but the gap wasn't this big or wasn't this small uh, last lap. It was a little bit bigger than this, I believe, after Dorian went down. So question is, with nothing but Rubes on the track in front of him, can Dorian run a clean heater? Rubes sitting at still with his best a 109, but that wreck with him and Dorian pushed it to a 115 as his last lap. Dorian not able to drop anything harder or hotter uh, than a 110 still. Steez having some trouble. Gerb having some trouble there as they are still in a heated battle themselves for the 15th place spot. Fafalito, who was up front here with this battle, is still sitting in fourth. And there is Dorian, who's having some trouble on the inside line of that sand roller. So as we're talking about Fafalito, now he has had an opportunity to catch up. So Fafalito now has his targeting systems locked on Dorian. Dorian's sitting in the crosshairs. Fafalito's trying to put himself into a podium spot and do it quickly. Rubes crossing the finish line with one second faster uh, on that lap than Stone Rider was as that gap has now decreased uh, by a second. So, with Rubes not battling with Dorian and not having to worry about line choice, only having to worry about doing the fastest lap that he can and running the best pace he can, staying out of the way of lappers, we could see Rubes having the opportunity to catch up to Stone Rider. I don't think he's going to be able to close that gap with 110 on the clock plus one lap, but if Stone Rider makes a mistake, then it's possible that we could see something a little closer. So here is your race leader, guys, Stone Rider on the KTM. If he wins, this will be his first win of the season of the Aerial ESX series. Watch here as Steez and Beast are in a battle here for the 14th place position. Lemunion having some trouble in that corner and goes down. Steez railing the outside. 
Triple through with Beast. Oh, but Beast goes down, so Steez is going to take that line or that position away. Rube's trying to make his way up through Beast and Lemonian. Blue flags out for these guys. As there is 30 seconds left on the clock, plus one. And the gap between him and Stone Rider has now closed by an additional two seconds. I'm telling you, man, if there was just another extra lap in this race, Rubes could potentially do something big. So the problem is, is that uh, the lap that they are already on will absolutely be uh, two laps remaining. So when Stone Rider crosses the finish line this next time, the white flag is going to be waving for him. So like I said, it's going to be really tough for Rubes to try to catch up and do something. But we still have a battle here for third place between Fafalito and Dorian. As Fafalito is trying to put DT crew on the podium tonight here in the 450 class. Can Dorian keep it up and keep it away? Fafalito not able to clear uh, and hit the step on. The, the triple on to table ends up going over the bars. So once again, Dorian finds himself on an island all by himself uh, except the lappers. Wait a minute. Something has happened. Stone Rider has gone down, and Rubes has made the pass into the lead. I do not know what has happened, guys, but Rubes is now sitting in the lead here, and there was your previous race leader for 19 minutes. White flag is about to come out for Rubes on the MXB Mods KTM, and we will see him taking lead in this race. I'm saving the replay because I've got to know. We will look at that after this is done. Rubes has now moved up into your first place spot, guys. Dorian takes the second place away. Where is Stone Rider? Has anyone seen Stone Rider? Stone Rider is hurt. Someone call the Alpine Stars medical crew because he is on the ground and down bad. Gets back up. Maybe controller issues? Maybe controller issues? Man. So what a turn of events. It, You know, I thought that it couldn't get more intense than the Heat. Heat 1 and Heat 2 that we saw here. But this was the absolute best main event that I have had the chance to commentate for Ariel. Simply given the long-winded battles, the drama towards the end, the twist. Man, re reminiscent of Dad Shoes catching Reese at round one. Except this was just far more intense for the whole moto. So here you go, guys. Coming across the finish line one final time at round nine is your race leader and number one uh, red plate holder in the series, Rubes. So Rubes takes the, the, the win here tonight at Daytona. Dorian crosses the finish line in second. And after all of that, it will be Fafalito with the DT crew who rounds out the podium in spot number three. Dad Shoes, just a couple more laps. Might have had an opportunity to put himself on the podium, but he is going to come across in fourth place. Um, so earlier somebody mentioned that Rubes had a two-point gap on Dad Shoes. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, three, five, it's going to be a seven-point gap now. I could be wrong. Um, so I actually decreased my, my replay capacity recently, so I don't think I'll have that that bit uh, between Rubes and Stone Rider in the live replay, but I will go back and load up that replay for you guys uh, just as soon as this race is officially over. So we've still got Reese on the track here. David with the Rogue Kawasaki team. These might be our final two, two racers to cross the finish line to end tonight's main event. And there you have it. So again, it's Rubes on the MXB Mod KTM who takes your first place spot. Dorian sitting in second. Fafalito topping off the podium in third. Dad Shoes in fourth. And Mini on the Rogue Racing Honda who takes top five. Thank you, Insane. I appreciate it. Petrick, thank you for the follow. Uh, <laughs> Fingra, Fingra, thank you for the follow. Interesting name.